Well, hello. Good morning, Journey. How's everybody doing today? Hope you've had your coffee this morning and are up and um, ready for a great uh, Sunday morning. I can just see the sun coming up over here over my right side as I'm driving into the Journey this morning. So I thought over the next uh, several weeks, we've been you know, we've been going through different words um, in Christian life, what they mean, uh, kind of how to discern some of those uh, things that we've always heard as Christians. So I thought over the next uh, several weeks, uh, I'll take some of the major objections people have to Christianity. And so the word of the day today, we're going to cover and we're going to talk about is the word hypocrite. You may have heard somebody say before, well, you know, those people, eh, those Christians, those people at the church are just a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, what does that really mean? I think sometimes we don't fully understand what being a hypocrite means because I've, I've heard this defense and I've heard people say before, oh, you're right. Everybody at church, we're just all a bunch of hypocrites because we're all sinners. Well, being a sinner does not make you a hypocrite. That, that's not what it means. In fact, the word uh, hypocritus in Greek means an actor or someone who is playing a part um, and so someone who is not who they appear to be and so being a hypocrite in scripture and uh, Jesus calls the Pharisees and the Sadduce Sadducees out on hypocrisy quite a bit and why does he do that well because they are not um, not just because they're sinners but because they say they're Christians but they live their life a different way in fact he says you hypocrites, you clean the outside of the cup, but you leave the inside dirty. You don't be like, um, uh, you know, here in Texas, uh, we love our tea. Then so you get a real strong tea that gets a stain going on inside of the cup, you know? And it'd be like, if you never clean the inside of that cup, you just wash the outside. What do you think that tea cup would look like after a while? Man, it would just be caked on, dirty, nasty stuff, right? Then he's saying, so you claim to be talking for God, but you're not living like it. And so that for us today, that would be for those who claim to be believers in Christ, um, not that we're not sinners and we don't fail and we don't uh, go through difficult times, but that we don't have the humility to admit uh, that we are sinners. Um, and so that's the first part of coming to Christ. We have to admit that we are a sinner in need of his grace. So what else does hypocrisy mean? Well, those who are hypocrites also um, are those um, that uh, do things for show just to be seen. In fact, Jesus uh, calls uh, the Pharisees on that as well. He says, there's those of you going to the synagogue and you pray and you love your titles. I don't know if you've been in a church where people love titles. They want to, they want to have pastor so-and-so or, or first lady so-and-so. And so they love these titles. And he says, that's, that's, that's hypocrisy because we're supposed to decrease that others would increase. We're not supposed to do things for show. Uh, I remember I was, uh, on a plane, uh, on the way to Tel Aviv uh, several years ago when I, I went to Israel. And uh, on that flight that night about midnight, uh, this Orthodox Jew next to me gets up and begins praying. And he's praying and he's bowing. But I noticed out of the corner of his eye, he would he would open his eyes and he would look up to see who around him was watching him. He was doing it all for show. He wanted people to see how religious he was. That's also hypocrisy. And then uh, there's another situation uh, where Jesus says, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites who moan and groan and do it for others to see. So that's when we serve, when we do things selflessly, we don't do them to be uh, built up in Christian life. So if somebody says to me, um, well, all Christians, all the church is hypocrites, I would say you're wrong. I said, I, I don't believe that. I said, now, do we have hypocrisy in the church? Absolutely. And should we? No, I don't think so. I think um, we all strive to look like Christ. It doesn't mean we don't fail, okay? But, um, and the greatest hypocrisy, I believe the world sees, is what's talked about in Acts chapter six, where it says there are those who have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and then they still walked away. They say the millennial generation, those from the age of about 25 to about 30, 32, um, are leaving the church in droves. Why? Well, they are disenchanted 
with what they're what the message they're getting and so they're leaving the church and so people see that that's a great hypocrisy because you said you were a christian now i would question whether they're really a follower of christ because we know then first john it says you can know you have salvation so for those that are truly saved um, our salvation is secure. And so uh, I, I believe that those who truly know Christ are never going to walk away from that grace. Now, they may stumble, they may fall, okay? But they're going to get back up and, and be built back up stronger than ever before. So hopefully this helps you understand hypocrisy a little bit better uh, this morning. So we'll talk about a different aspect of uh, those who uh, who uh, would attack the church or attack Christians and say, this is why I don't want to become a follower of Christ, because you should desire that. You should want that because it is not only is it your salvation, it's your eternal salvation. So it has eternal ramifications for you. And, uh, and so our desire here at the Journey Church this morning is that when you come into worship, that you hear the gospel clearly proclaimed. Not that there's not a time when we've played the part and we've looked like a hypocrite, but in reality, um, hypocrisy should not be something that, that we're proud of or desire or look for. It, it should be something that, that we are constantly doing battle against uh, as Satan wants to discredit the church and discredit its people. And so I uh, hope you'll come into worship this morning. So at The Journey, we have two services, one starting at 9 o'clock here in just a little bit, in a little over an hour. Then we have another one at 11 o'clock, and we have lots of space. We're still social distancing. I um, encourage you to wear your mask uh, if you need to do that. Um, but we'd love to have you come and just uh, be a part of worship this morning. So God bless you. Thanks for coming with me on my drive-in this morning. And have an amazing day as you journey on with Christ. Thank you.